Hey guys, I'm doing an explanation video on fuel injectors and the fuel rail. I replaced the fuel rail on my Nissan Xterra. Long story short, I was throwing parts at it, uh, trying to improve my little bit of a rough idle, but basically replaced some fuel injectors. Unfortunately, that didn't go well, so now I had to go back and do it again and damage part of the fuel rail. So, just a quick overview of the fuel rail. The fuel rail is going to be this horseshoe-shaped tubing that I have right here. The orientation is going to be that the front bumper is going to be up near this edge that is kind of bent and closed in. Then you've got passenger side, driver side, and the firewall is going to be back here towards me. Now if you look over by the passenger side fender, there is going to be the main fuel inlet which has a bolted flange that has the high pressure uh, fuel line that goes into this fuel rail. And as that fuel pump is pushing fuel in here, it's going to put fuel throughout the entire tube and all the way to the end. Now on the end here, there is another flange connection. That's where the fuel pressure regulator is. That fuel pressure regulator is gonna bleed off any extra fuel to maintain a consistent pressure throughout the entire fuel rail. Now if you look at an actual injector, you can see that the actual body of the injector here is hollow and it's got kind of a mesh screen. So as you're pushing fuel throughout the tubing, you're actually filling up each one of these injectors with fuel. And at the bottom end is going to be a calibrated nozzle. And so anytime you get the electrical signal here, that's going to open the nozzle. So as you have this entire thing pressurized, the ECU is going to open the nozzle and spray fuel into that specific cylinder. So there is a rubber O-ring at the top of the fuel injector. There's a small one at the base of the nozzle. There's also a little rubber washer. And that's all going to seal the injector to the inside bore of this little bucket here. So really to install a fuel injector, right, is you just pop it into the bucket, you're done. And you got this little metal piece that kind of looks like a little top hat or a little topper here. And you just got two screws on the flange that go to either side. But you also have this little rubber grommet. One side has a metal shim on it. That metal shim is going to go on the fuel injector and that just maintains a constant pressure pushing the injector down into the bucket that it sits in. On the flip side of the fuel rail, you can see the bucket feature actually has a little bit of a nozzle and that's where the nozzle of the fuel injector mates to, but there's actually a rubber washer that seals around the outside of this and that seals to your lower intake manifold and that actually is an air seal preventing air from the outside from getting inside that manifold. So if for whatever reason you needed to remove your fuel rail here, you know, you can rebuild a fuel injector or replace a fuel injector without removing the entire rail. Uh, but if you did need to remove the rail, it's really just four bolts holding it in. There's these little flanges that have a location for bolt holes. It's a little bit difficult to get wrenches on some of them, but it's not too bad. Now underneath each one of those four mounts is actually kind of a rubber or plastic washer that was underneath there and that's just an isolator to help prevent vibration. Now if you do need to remove the fuel rail other than the four bolts that hold it in, go ahead and leave your fuel pressure regulator on but there is going to be a fuel line on the back side near the firewall so you're going to need to disconnect just a hose clamp and a rubber hose there and then everything should pretty much pry up. So the first tip that I have is going to be avoid cheap fuel injectors. I thought I was being clever. These Amazon fuel injectors got decent reviews on Amazon. There was only like three or four reviews on there or whatever. You can see this looks pretty much brand new. Uh, but after I installed them, uh, my truck ran even worse. It didn't even run. It was undrivable essentially. I tried to save money by getting a pack of six for only $120, but it ended up costing me more because then I ended up buying a complete fuel rail including OEM fuel injectors to end up replacing it with. So the second tip is going to be with the screws that hold these top hats on. Pretty much about half of the screws end up stripping out. They're rusted, they're corroded, whatever. So you're going to have to really focus on making sure that you don't damage these screws beyond repair. So I'm going to go through the process on extracting screws just to kind of give you guys a demonstration of what you might have to be dealing with. So first of all, penetrating fluid. Try and get it on the back side of the threads and up on the bolt head if you can. So when you just have a small Phillips head screw, like a machine screw like this, um, you have to use one, the right bit. 
So this one was not the super pointy Phillips and not the fat Phillips. It was kind of a middle ground Phillips. So I know there's official names for those, but I don't know those off the top of my head. But you need to use lots of downforce and lots of torque. So honestly, the best thing that I found, which was after it was too late, was using a power drill. That way you can really lean into the screws and then allow the electricity to actually apply the torque. I'm going to try my luck using the drill, but I don't know if that's going to work. Nope, that one's stripped now. Alright, so I did get that one. So this is actually the perfect example of what happened with my original fuel rail when I was trying to get the screws out. So on this specific injector here, I got one screw out and that one stripped out. So really, the way that I use this, and there might be other ways to extract screws, but the way that I end up extracting them is by finding a better bit that can bite into it. So this was a Phillips head and now the head of that screw is rounded out pretty good. So I'm going to find a star bit or a square bit or something else that I can kind of hammer and tap in there that might be able to get quite a bit more bite. So this square bit might fit, but I will tell you one thing, and this is actually how I damaged my fuel rail. If you got the other side removed, before you start hammering on one flange, put the other screw back in because that will brace this top hat piece from putting so much force into the actual flange. So you can see this is actually the one that I damaged. And what happened is, is I removed the screw on this side and then I started hammering on this side. And you can see that that flange ended up getting bent down because it required a bit of force with the hammer to extract the screw. That made it more difficult to put things back together and I ended up not being able to actually uh, secure that top hat properly. Ow, that hurt because I hit my fingers. And that still isn't quite good enough. Once you strip it out like a second time, then you might have to go up to a larger square bit or you might have to get a star bit. So you just got to keep working on it. And that rounded that out even more. So the last thing that you can try that works for me pretty well is to go ahead and drill it just a little bit. Now I'm not talking about drill it so that the actual head of the screw pops off and drill out the, the cross section of the actual bolt, but just drill out some of the deformed metal so that you have a better circle to work with and then use like a star bit that's a little oversized that you can kind of grip the edges. That gives you kind of more surface area to grip the screw by. So I'm just going to drill out the head of this a little bit more. So that's probably hard to see on the camera, but drilling it out just gives me a deeper cylinder that I can try and get another bit into. And now you have that screw out. You can see that head's pretty deformed and it's got a square bit basically. So you could either reuse this if you feel good about how secure that square bit is, but I'd probably recommend new screws. And again, the big tip to prevent damage was to leave at least one screw on the other side so that when you're hammering it down, see how that flange is still, see how that flange is still nice and flat. That's what you're going for. And if you remove the screw on the other side, then you end up just bending that flange down every time you hammer it. So once you have the actual screws out and you have the fuel injectors accessible, the easiest thing to do is to try and twist it to the side and then use a flat blade screwdriver underneath the flange where the screw went and just kind of rotate it and pry it up and out. And that's how you get the fuel injector out.
If you don't want to spend a boatload of money to replace fuel injectors, you can try a seal kit. So I just went to Rock Auto and I got a, a seal kit from Beck Arnley. But each kit was like three bucks and it comes with a replacement large o-ring, a replacement small o-ring. It comes with the replacement rubber washer. Now when you do rebuild the injector, I recommend that you put the large o-ring on first and then put this rubber washer on second and then put the small o-ring on the nozzle here. If you do it in reverse or if you take the rubber washer and you just kind of drop it in the bottom of the bucket, it could get crossed up and it could end up not sealing properly or when you push it through it could end up knocking the o-ring out of the channel that it sits in like that. So that kit also included the rubber grommets that go on the bottom of the fuel rail. So that seals along the bottom here to your lower intake manifold. It's a little bit tricky to get them lined up when you get them underneath the fuel rail. I was replacing the fuel rail altogether, so I had to do that anyway. So if you don't think you got an air leak there, then maybe you just leave your fuel rail bolted down and not worry about it. But for three bucks, it's nice to have. The last thing that that O-ring kit also includes is that little rubber grommet that has the little metal shim on it. And of course that just goes on top of the fuel injector like that. So if you don't want to replace your fuel injectors and you don't want to risk getting faulty injectors off of, you know, Amazon, get a cheap set of six or whatever, it might be a good idea to just get the rebuild kits and rebuild your OEM injectors and reinstall them. Last tip here is pretty much with any type of rubber o-ring, you want to lube it up. So I, I use just my finger and some 10W30 engine oil and just kind of wiped it around the o-ring. When you're pressing it into say a metal fitting or a metal tube like that, you don't want it to pinch and end up getting a nick in the o-ring. So you want to just lube it up. It also makes it easier to slide into place into that bucket. The other thing is, is well, why would you really need to replace your injectors or to rebuild them? You know, if you have a fuel leak, a lot of times you'll see things like what I had when I had these Amazon injectors installed. It was just very running rough. It was a lot of hesitation when you hit the gas. It was a lot of smoking uh, out the tailpipe. It was a lot of white, gray, cloudy smoke, and I actually had like liquid raw fuel uh, spurting out of the tailpipe at the end of my truck. So it was clearly getting extra fuel from somewhere, whether it was from the actual injector calibration itself or whether it was from faulty O-rings not making a good seal. Hard to say exactly what it was, but the OEM injectors took care of that. So the last tip that I'll give you is on the electrical connections. On two of the fuel injectors, it's actually the middle cylinder here and the middle cylinder over here. The connector is different. It's got the green tabs on it. So the other ones are easy squeeze tabs. You just squeeze it with your thumb and pull it out. The green ones are a little bit different, and if you don't know how to do it, you can end up damaging it like I did. So there's three little green tabs here, and you don't push it in, you actually push it straight down. And you'll feel a little click when it goes. And you can see how this green tab after it's disconnected is recessed inwards or downwards. So you're not pushing it like this, you're pushing it like this. And then once you reinstall it back on top of the injector, it will snap back into place and the green part will pop back up. So I hope that this video helped a couple people. I know there's a lot of other videos out there um, from Steven XNYC Performance, I think is his uh, YouTube name. He's got a lot of great videos out there. And I still ran into a little bit of trouble or a little bit of, uh, like I said, tricky situations. And so I just wanted to share what I found out while I was going through replacing the fuel injectors twice and replacing the entire fuel rail.